Exodus, the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 17. Go ahead. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children until the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord would not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gate. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 12th chapter. We're going to read verses 13 and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Let's go to Revelation chapter 22. Read verses 14 and 15. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. But without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Well, praise God for reading the law. As always, I'm glad to stand before you on the Lord's Sabbath day. We're going to get right into this lesson, sisters and brothers. This is a lesson that fell through the cracks. I don't know. I, I haven't done that in maybe 15 or 20 years. But still, I teach a lot of stuff, and uh, sometimes some of it slips through the crack, and this is one of them. The title of this lesson is Through Our Faith and Efforts, God Worked for Us. Through our faith and effort, God worked for us. Because this is the thing, sisters and brothers, that people do not understand. And that is, if you are a servant of God, and you do what he say, and you really need him, he is always there. You have to believe in him. 
which means you have to have faith in it. Right. And you also, you have to do what he tells you to do because God hears those that hear him. And we're going to get right to this, sister and brother, because let you know, God works for you when you make an effort, when you believe in him and you make an effort to serve him and do what he said. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes uh, 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 you have to wait. But the whole thing is God is never late. He is always on time. Like sometimes people tell me, well, brother, boy, I wish I had found this 20 years ago. God, maybe, maybe God knew you wasn't ready for it 20 years ago. But now that you found it, it's up to you to show the Lord that you believe in him, to show that you have faith in him by obeying his word. We're going to start this in Galatians, the third chapter. Galatians chapter 3. Because we have people out here that say they serve God, but they don't do anything that he's saying. And uh, we're going to show you that's not the case. And if you should serve him, then you should, if you do serve him, then he will hear you. Galatians 3, and we're going to start at verse 11. Galatians 3 and verse 11. Okay, read it. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. And that is the thing. No man is justified by the law in the sight of God. But the just shall live by faith. But what law is this, sisters and brothers? People say this, see, you don't have to keep them commandments. All you have to do is have faith. Look, is, is have faith. This is not talking about the commandment. Skip down to verse 19 and read it. Verse 19, go ahead. Wherefore then serve the law. Why then serve the law? Go ahead. It was added because of transgression. Till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. So why serve the law? It was added because of transgression. Sister and brother, you know what the biblical definition of sin is? The transgression of the law. So how is it that you can sin if there is no law? And how is the law can be added because of sin when you have to break the law to sin. This is another law, sisters and brothers, and people do not understand that. So they say, why then serve the law? You, you live by faith, by your belief, and your belief is going to dictate your behavior. So let's look at this law that was added because of transgression. Let's go into Hebrews, the 10th Brother chapter. Lord. Huh? Skip to. Oh, well, let's skip some. I'm going too fast. Skip down to verse 23. We'll get there. Verse 23. Galatians 3 and 21, brother. 3 and 21. Okay, go ahead. Is the law then, is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. The law is not against any promises. His, his promises are what they are. So now, it's not against the promise of God, but go ahead. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. See, now this law couldn't give life, and we're going to show you that it couldn't give life. So this law was not what you needed to get to where you need to go. Go ahead and read. But the scripture has concluded all under sin uh -huh. that the promise of by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. So now when people walk around and saying they're holier than thou, you quote this to them, all of us are under sin. There ain't nobody on this planet that have not sinned at one time or another. That's why Jesus called the Holy One of Israel. So we all under sin, therefore all of us needed the blood of Jesus and to have faith in him. But go ahead and read. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, uh -huh. shut up into the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Look, before faith came, I always like to make this statement, people think that faith is an individual. A faith is some kind of living entity. No, it is before, before you start having faith in the Lord and obey his, his word, then you was kept under the law. What law? We're going to show you the law of animal sacrifice. 
Because the wages of sin is death, sisters and brothers. When somebody sins, something had to die. So the Lord, instead of killing us, he killed the animals. Otherwise, he wouldn't have no creation left. We'd all be dead. And we're going to show you this. Before we start believe, believing in the Lord <clears throat> and walking in his ways, we was kept under the law. Now let's go into Hebrews 10, chapter 9, and look at this law. Hebrews chapter 10. Because you have people out here teaching against the law is because they don't know about the law that was added because of transgression. We're going to show you the law that's added because of transgression. Because sin is the transgression of the law. If sin is the transgression of the law, then how are you going to add a law because of transgression? That don't work. In short, we broke one law, and then the Lord, the Lord added another law to keep from killing us all. Hebrews 10 chapter, and read verse 1. Let's look at this law. Go ahead and read. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, Go ahead. can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. So now, so this law here is the law of animal sacrifice. People read this here and say the law is a shadow of good things to come. Of course it is. But the only problem is you couldn't get eternal life by this law, sister. That's right, right, brother boy. And why couldn't you? Skip down and read verse 4. Verse 4 and go ahead. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sin. So now, so you could not, sisters and brothers, become perfect. If you're perfect, that means you become God. You could not get salvation. You could not get eternal life on the good side of the kingdom with the law of animal sacrifice. Because the blood of bulls and goats could never remove sin, sister. So when the Lord came and died for your sin, then all you had to do was bleed and do what Adam and Eve failed to do in the Garden of Eve. That is obey. Belief is not enough. In fact, if you really believe, you're going to obey. But let's go into Hebrews 11 chapter and show you it is the word, it is the faith that's going to get you salvation. Hebrews 11 and verse 1. Go ahead. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, uh -huh. the evidence of things not seen. Then we're hoping for what the Lord said, and the reason we're hoping because we have seen the evidence of what he's done in the past. We have not seen what he's going to do in the future, but he told us and we believe it. Why? Because we have seen what he did before. Go ahead and read. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Uh-huh. Now by it the elders retained a good report. They weren't saved. They just obtained a good report. People run around telling them I'm saved. No, the best you can get right now is a good report. But if you get that, that's pretty good. All you have to do is maintain it. That's right. Go ahead and read. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Uh -huh. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Look, we was not in the beginning when God created the heaven and the earth. We was not there when he spanned the, heaven, the, the uh, stars and the moon. We were not there. But we believe that God did it. That makes the difference. Right. That's what faith is. You believe God. He said, I, I, I made the creation. I, I'm the one that made, laid the foundation of the earth. I'm the one that set the moon and the star out there. I created you. I created the animals. We believe that. That's what faith is, belief, sister and brother. There's nothing big and complicated because the word of God is simple. When you put the simplicity back in it, it is not hard to understand. And if you're going to be justified in the eyes of God, you got to believe it. Let's go into Romans, the first chapter. Back up to Romans, the first chapter. Because the problem is that nobody have no faith nowadays. Nobody believe anything. But you've been lied to so many 
In so many ways, in the name of the Lord, I can't hardly blame you. But why I blame you is that you didn't bother to pick up that Bible and check guys like me out. If you said it were, it's the Word of God, then it should be written in the book that God put forth, sister and brother. So you are not innocent because, well, you know, so many preachers done lied. Like, what can you believe? I said, what's written in the book? Right. It's all that simple. Because we are always looking for an excuse to get a free ride. I want to get paid without working. That don't make sense. Romans 1, and we're going to start reading at verse 16. 1 and 16. Okay, go ahead. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes it. Now that's what this, the gospel is. It's the power of God to save everyone that believe it. That means everyone that have faith. Sure, he died for the sins of the people, but you got to believe it if you're going to cash in on it. Go ahead and read. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. Uh-huh. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. Go ahead. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. And if you are the just, are you going to be justified? You're going to live by faith. But sisters and brothers, that just, just didn't stop with the coming of Jesus. It always been that way. But until Jesus died, the faith could not save you. But the just have always lived by faith. And let's go and show you what I'm talking about. Let's go into the book of Habakkuk. Habakkuk, the seventh chapter, the second chapter. Habakkuk chapter two. See, people think that, well, when Jesus came, he brought something new. No, he didn't bring nothing new. What he came to do is give you access to something that you had from the old, and you blew it because of misbehaving and not listening to the Lord. Solomon told you there ain't nothing new under the sun. Habakkuk chapter 2, Habakkuk chapter 2, that's one of the little books. Habakkuk 2, and we're going to read one verse, verse 4. Go ahead and read it. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. They're telling us somebody all puffed up. They know more than everybody else. And you know them kind of people. They're always talking to people about something. Always have a different view on something. Always have an angle. No matter what you said to them, they, got their, they have their slant on it. We got some people in here like that. They don't think I know about them. But I know about them, but why don't I worry about them? Because if I teach this word and they listen, whatever they say, they can only convict themselves or change themselves, not you. And I said, the ones that have his own angle, he need to be here more than the one that don't. Because the only soul that he can really say or condemn is his own soul, or her own soul, either way you look at it. But he said, so now if he's upright, a pumped up in his own mind, God don't have no use for him. Why? Go ahead. But the just shall live by his faith. But the just shall live by his faith. So we see that didn't come after the coming of Jesus, did it? No. It always been around. And we're going to show you some examples, sister and brother. But if you are just and you want to be justified in the eyes of God, you got to live by faith. What is faith? Your belief. And when it comes to the thing of your belief, when it's time for you to show it, you don't walk around and say, well, you know, I believe this and I believe that. No, when the Lord tells you to do something, you just do it. You don't have to get up and tell people that you have faith. All you got to do is walk in it, and they are going to notice it. Now, let's go into Hebrews, the 11th chapter. Hebrews chapter 11. Because if you don't have no faith, you can't believe God, sister and brother. Because in order for you to do something, you have to, have to believe that you have a reward coming. I know that God told me, well, I don't believe in nothing. I said, man, you got a job? Yeah. When do you get paid? On Friday. When do you start working? I start every Monday. I said, then you got faith that you're going to get paid. Otherwise, you wouldn't be working. 
Right. So you got some faith in stuff. I look at your behavior. If you didn't have no faith that you were gonna get paid, you wasn't gonna get paid, would you work? So now I don't care how smart you think you are, you just outsmarted yourself. <laughs> when you say I don't have no faith in nothing. Yeah, you did. You have faith in your job that you're going to get paid at the end of the week. Hebrews 11, we're going to start reading at verse 23. Hebrews 11 and verse 23. Okay, go ahead. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was here three months of his parents uh -huh. because they saw he was a proper child. Uh -huh. They were not afraid of the king's commandment. By now, faith. What they did was? Moses' parent hid him from Pharaoh because the Pharaoh was trying to kill all of the males because the Egyptians are the only people that we have ever encountered, which are Hamites, Ham's second oldest son, Mizraim. They're the only people that tried to totally annihilate the nation of Israel. How do you annihilate a whole nation? By killing all the males because the males carry the seed. If you kill all the males, then the Women would have had to turn to Egyptian. Right. Then the babies that would be born by the Egyptian was Egyptian then, not Israelite. But Moses' parent hid him. Go ahead and read. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Now Moses probably could have been the next Pharaoh, sister and brother. Because his mother, she couldn't find, they couldn't hide him no more. So what they did was they put him in a little old bitty boat. In the flag, in the, in the flag, that's the weeds in the shallow water at the river's bank. I'm sure pretty sure that was the Nile River. Mm -hmm. And Pharaoh's daughter come down to the river to wash herself, and she saw that little old bitty boat. She told her servant, go get it. When they brought that little boat up she, and, and opened it up, Moses was in there, and he started to cry. And she loved him. So his sister come and said, look. Do you want somebody to nurse the child? She said, yeah, take him away. And when he's weaned, bring him back. So when she took him to his own mother's house, but she could raise Moses under the protection of the Pharaoh's daughter because Pharaoh thought that this was his grandson that his daughter was raising. That lets you know what color Israel is, don't it? Right. So Moses could have been the next Probably could have been the next Pharaoh. But no, no, he didn't want that. He'd rather go on out there and suffer with his people because his mother taught him about the God of Israel. You think she didn't teach him that? Skip down to verse 28 and go ahead. Through faith, he kept the Passover uh -huh. and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch it, judge now, them. Now, through faith, he kept the Passover. Because the Lord told him what he was going to do and Moses and, and told Moses what to do to avoid the consequences. Now let's go look at this when he kept the Passover. Let's go in the Exodus the 12th chapter. But put your a marker here in Hebrews because we're going to come back to Hebrews the 11th chapter. Put your marker there. Now let's go in the Exodus the 12th chapter. Look at this. We'll find out that Faith has always, the just have always lived by faith. Because if you didn't live by faith, you're going to see some of the consequences that you could have suffered. You know, I really know I got, people tell you you got faith. But you, uh, this Sunday is your Sabbath day. I got faith. But you'll sit down and eat you some pork chop and chitlins <laughs> and shrimps and crabs. But you got faith in. Exodus 12, and we're going to start at verse 1. Exodus chapter 12 and verse 1. Okay, read it. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, uh -huh. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. Go ahead. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Uh -huh. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day, of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. So I want you to tell Israel to go and put up a grant. I want all of them to get a lamb. 
And I want this lamb to be the firstborn. I want him to be perfect. Don't have a blemish. And I want you to put him up on the tenth day of the month. That's the month Abel. Skip down to verse 6 and go ahead. And you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. Uh-huh. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. So now you just couldn't go down to your local meat market and buy you a lamb. You couldn't do this. What you had to do, you had to have a female lamb. Then she had to have a male, the first one, and you had to examine, make sure he had no flaws. And then on the 10th day of the month, Abib, you put him up. But you kept him up until the 14th day. Then you killed him. We got brothers right now running around buying lamb and eating lamb for the uh, uh, 14th day for the Passover. <laughs> and I tell them, look, you're doing this wrong. If you're going to do wrong, why don't you read the book and learn how to do wrong right? But then they ain't got no farm to put him on, do they? That's right. So he said, look. What verse are we? That was the end of six. Go ahead. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts uh -huh. and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. And I like to see them get the blood of that lamb and put it over the door post in their apartment building. <laughs> and see how long you're going to be there. They'll put it over the doorpost. Why? Skip down to verse 12. Verse 12 and go ahead. Well, I will pass through the land of Egypt this night. Uh-huh. And will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Go ahead. Both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. So he said, I'm going to come through and kill the firstborn of everything. Go ahead and read. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. A token of what? Pay attention, sisters and brothers. And the blood shall be unto you as a token upon the house. It's a token of what? A token of your faith. That's right. Had you not believed Moses that God told him to do this and he was going to do this, then you, oh, I ain't putting no blood over my doorpost. Get on out of here with this foolishness. Then the Lord would have killed the firstborn in your household. The Lord going to do all that he said he's going to do every time. He said, so when I see the blood, it should be a token upon the houses where you are. Go ahead and read. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Uh -huh. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Now, he said, when I see the blood, I'm going to pass over you. He didn't say when I see the Hebrew Israelite. He didn't even say when I see the good or bad. Because the Lord tell you, the day that an evil man turned to doing righteousness, none of his evil will be mentioned. Right. And vice versa. So when you put that, when they put that blood over the doorpost, God saw only one thing, children of faith. This is what you got to understand. Because the faith have always lived, the just have always lived by, way by faith. What, what are we now? That was the end of 13. Now, skip down to verse 28. The Lord going to cause it to happen. Verse 28. See, people are always tell me, I got faith, I got faith, but you don't do nothing God says. So what do you have faith in? That's right. It's all that simple. Verse 28, go ahead. And the children of Israel went away and did as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron so did they. So they went away and they did exactly what God commanded Moses. Go ahead and read. And it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Go ahead. From the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne until the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon and all the firstborn of cattle. Now, the Lord did what he did and you did what you had to do. So now you were saved. But he come through and killed the firstborn of everything. Go ahead and read. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants and all the Egyptians. And there was a great cry in Egypt. Go ahead. For there was not a house where there was not one dead. Look, well, if you didn't have no blood over your doorpost, your firstborn died. It's all that simple. It's obvious that none of the Egyptians listened to Moses. 
I know some of them was listening to Moses because when you go and see when they brought, God brought these plagues, some of them, when you go, I'm going to rain hell and I'm going to kill all your cows. Some of them took their cows in the house. So that means that some of the Egyptians believed some of the stuff that Moses was saying, but they didn't believe it all. Right. But go ahead and read. Verse 31. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, Rise up and get you forth from among my people. Go ahead. Both ye and the children of Israel. And go, serve the Lord as ye have said. Now, then Pharaoh started to believe, didn't he? But Pharaoh wanted to believe, but the Lord wouldn't let him because he had to collect on each. That's right. But Israel was saved by faith. And their faith produced action. What was the action? They killed the lamb. Then they took the blood of the lamb and put it over the doorpost. They could say, well, Lord, I, I, I believe you, but, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> that killing the lamb and putting the blood over my doorpost, that's, maybe that's a bridge too far. <laughs> and you would have died. It's all that simple. You don't affect the Lord. You only affect yourself. Faith, sisters and brothers. So I tell you this, keep Hebrews 11 chapter, so let's go back there. Hebrew, Hebrews chapter 11. See, this is a thing that a lot of people don't have. They don't, my Hebrew brothers don't have it, and the Christian church don't have it. But all of them use the word, you know, throw it around like a cover. But they don't have it, sisters and brothers. Brother, you can't stand in judgment. People, brother, you can't stand in judgment. I ain't standing on judgment. I'm called a spade a spade. You tell me you believe in God and he gave you a dietary law and you sitting there eating pork chops. <laughs> I didn't condemn you because I said, you eating pork chops, mister. You condemning me? No, no, you just condemn yourself. And I believe in God. Yeah, well, why are you eating the pig then? Ain't nobody being judged. What it is, you don't want me to point out your flaws. I'm trying to save you, not me. Go read verse 29. Hebrews 11 and verse 29. Okay, read it. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land. Uh-huh. Which the Egyptians are saying to do were drowned. By faith. Think about it now. All of a sudden you see this big body of water and it's split. And you're going to walk through and you got water three or four stories high on each side? That takes some faith. So he said, wait a minute. Maybe that's some kind of uh, freak of nature, <laughs> of nature. And that water give when I'm dry. No, by faith, they went into the Red Sea on dry land. By faith. God told them about it. Let's go and look at it. Let's go into Exodus, the 14th chapter. Exodus, the 14th chapter. Because, sisters and brothers, the Lord do a whole lot of things for us if we believe in it. I know. I really know. God, remember, I was uh, going down uh, 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 Stony Island one time. We was in the storefront. And I come, and I saw them putting up that, that new church on Stony Island. I forgot what area it was. I think it's 76 or 77 or something like that. I got upset at God. I said, look, you done gave this Sunday Christians a church, and you won't give me one little old church? Look at it now. Not only this. 23 buildings and one even in Zimbabwe that we built from the ground. I was upset at God, but there's one thing that I did. I didn't stop serving him. So I see this guy still got that one church over there and I done trumped him by 23. <laughs> and the church he got here I could put it right here where you are and, and have some space left. That's right. But I actually got, got, got mad at God. You understand? I know I'm, I'm teaching your word. 
I know I'm doing this exactly like the book said, but you got these people that are not living your word, and you giving them a, giving this person a brand new church. That let me know, don't get mad at God. What you do is just keep being busy. Now, where we say was going? Exodus 14. <laughs> Let's go to Exodus, the 14th chapter. Because it said, by faith, they passed through the Red Sea. Exodus chapter 14. Because, sisters and brothers, you know, you go through a lot of things when you're serving God, but the one that make it, understand that the, the Lord didn't say it, it would be easy. He just said it is doable. If you know it can be done, then don't concern yourself with it being evil, easy. Because if you look for it to be easy, then the Lord might do you like he did Job. Just move his hand and let Satan tweak you a little bit. Mm. And as soon as calamity come, I want that. you faint. Right. Exodus 14, Exodus 14 and verse 1. Because he said, by faith, Israel went, in, went into the, uh, across the Red Sea. Verse 1, go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, speaking to the children of Israel, that they turn and encamp before Pahiaroth, between Migdal and the sea, over against Baal Zephron. Uh -huh. before, it shall, before it shall ye encamp by the sea. Go ahead. But for Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. Go ahead. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, that he shall follow after them. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. So now, the Lord said, look, Pharaoh going to think in his mind they done got entangled in the, earth, in, 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 the will, in, in the land and they done got lost. Why did he do Pharaoh? Because he put the thought in Pharaoh's mind. Because he told Moses, Pharaoh ain't going to listen to you. You know, I'm the one that's going to deal with Pharaoh. So he said, Pharaoh, then he's going to get his people, and they're going to come after Israel so I can be glorified in the eyes of the people. So not only will Israel know, then Egypt will know that I am God. It's obvious, what, no matter all the stuff he had done to, it, to Egypt, the people still didn't believe it. The Egyptian didn't. And Israel didn't believe a lot either, sister and brother. We're going to show you this. Skip down to verse 10. So Pharaoh got after Israel, and then Israel looked up and saw him. Verse 10, go ahead and read. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. Go ahead. And they were so afraid, and the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And now, that, that's, what, that's what the first thing that puzzled me. Why are these people so afraid when God just brought uh, 10 plagues upon Egypt? I mean, right. and... I mean, and beat Egypt down. That's because Israel as a whole, they didn't have faith in this God, even though he had shown them his might. Go ahead and read. And they said unto Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, has thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? I tell you that they didn't believe, I'm right? I'm telling you, boy. Go ahead and read. Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us uh -huh. to carry us forth out of Egypt? Go ahead. Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. Think about what you read there, sister and brother. This is Israel. <laughs> Unbelievable. All of a sudden, they're talking about, we're going to get die right here. We could have served the Egyptians. We'd rather been slaved than to be dead. What verse are we? That was the end of 12. Go ahead. And Moses said unto the people, Be ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. Go ahead. Which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. Now he told them, stand still and see the power of the Lord, even though they've seen it already. But still, you got to be given some more. Go ahead and read. The Lord shall fight for you, uh -huh. and you shall hold your peace. Then this is what we understand, need to understand, sister and brother. When you are right, and you obey God, 
When somebody come against you, you don't try to reciprocate and, 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 and trade blow for blow. Be the servant of God. Sometimes you have to humble yourself and just say, okay, we'll see. Then get out of the way and let the Lord fight for you. He's been fighting a long time. He know more about battle tactics than you do. Go ahead and read. Verse 15. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. Go ahead. But lift, up, but lift thou up thy rod and stretch out thine hand over the sea uh -huh. and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Now, Moses said, why, why are you crying out to me, Moses? Get on up there with your staff and stretch it out over the sea. I'm going to split the sea, and I'm going to let you and Israel go over dry shod. Moses believed him. How do I know that Moses believed him? Skip down to verse 21. Verse 21, and go ahead. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. That tell me that he believed God, didn't he? Why? He didn't have to say, well, God, I believe you. All he had to do was go over there and stretch out the rod over the sea. Go ahead and read. And the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night. Go ahead. And made the sea dry land. Uh -huh. And the waters were divided. Go ahead. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground. And the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. So Moses had faith, that's why the Lord split the sea, and finally Israel had enough faith, or either they had fear of the Egyptians. <laughs> I'd rather say that. Then they ran into the sea. Go ahead and read. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea. Go ahead. Even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. Uh -huh. And it came to pass that in the morning, in the morning watch, the Lord looked into the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud. Now you think that the Lord still ain't peeping through the cloud? <laughs> I'm telling you. He still is? <laughs> Wherever he got servants, he's still peeping to see what your behavior is or what somebody's doing to you. And you find out it gets real rough sometimes, but you say, but I'm still here. You have to look at the results sometimes. So he peeped through the cloud, and he started to mess with the Egyptians. Go ahead and read. And troubled the host of the Egyptians. Go ahead. And took off their chariot wheels, that they drave them heavily, so that, the, so that the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel, uh -huh. for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. It took them a long time to come to that conclusion, didn't it? But now, they said, look, the Lord fights for Israel. We better, we better... Leave these people alone. But sometime when your enemy try to leave you alone, then you don't have to pursue and try and take care of him. He have crossed God. God will deal with him. As this is the case. Go ahead and read. 26. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the sea, uh -huh. that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, Go ahead. upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. The Lord told Moses to do it, and Moses did it. Go ahead. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its strength when the morning appeared. Go ahead. And the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. Go ahead. And the, and the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the hosts of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them. So now, who... Fought the battle for Israel. Lord. The Lord did. He drowned Pharaoh and his whole army right there in the Red Sea. Why? It's because Moses had faith anyway. The, the Israelites probably had more fear <laughs> as a nation, but Moses had the faith. That's right. That's why I said in the new book, by Moses, by, uh, by faith, Moses passed through the Red Sea. It's all about faith, sisters and brothers. Because Moses believed God, he saved Israel. And because the prophets and all of the servants believed God, they all reaped great benefits. God is not, have not changed. 
You believe him and do what he's saying, he'll take care of you. It's all that simple. He will take care of you. That's why I look around. I look at me. Grew up in Palm Bluff, Arkansas. Took two years to get out of the 12th grade. Of course, I got thrown out for shooting craps in the ravine. But still, I'm a long way from the guy that took 13 years to get out of, out of high school, right? Why? Because I believe God, and all of a sudden things start to. I got angry with that one time over that one church, and he's been throwing so many churches at me, I can't keep up. That's right. I just told you about the brick and mortar when I said 23. I didn't tell you about the places that we rent, that we lease. And the groups of people all over the world that's calling and emailing me, we're listening to you. Faith, sisters and brothers. So now, because of faith, the servants of God always reap great benefits from God. Let's give you another case of faith. Let's go into 2 Kings, the fourth chapter. 2 Kings, the fourth chapter. See, people have lost the key to being blessed by God. And that key is faith. You got to have it. And you got to act on it the way God wants you to act on it. 2 Kings chapter 4. People say, well, Brother Boy, you know, Old Testament, you read by faith? What is, didn't, it, didn't we read in Habakkuk, the just shall live by faith? That's right. It's always been about faith. That's right. And Adam and Eve believed God and, didn't, and, and avoided talking to Satan, we wouldn't be dying today. He didn't ask them to do some great thing. All he said was, don't talk to that person. That's simple, ain't it? Then all you had to do, you come out and talk to him. Is that too hard to do? Didn't even have to say, get out of my face. Didn't even have to say, God rebuke you. All he had to do was keep his mouth shut and just walk a home way. That's too simple. And that's the problem. People don't believe in the simplicity of God. We're going to show you some cases this, like this. 2 Kings chapter 4. 2 Kings, the fourth chapter. And we're going to start reading at verse 1. 2 Kings 4 and 1. Because the Lord, don't re you know, all he requires you to do is obey him. And he'll do the rest. Verse 1, go ahead. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. Now Elijah was a top prophet. He took over out, Elisha rather, he was a top prophet. He took over after God retired Elijah. And by the way, he didn't take him to heaven. He just took him somewhere else on earth. That's right. But then, so all the prophets was under Elisha. And so one of these prophets died, and his widow, and this prophet owed some people money. And, his, and they come and say, look, either pay the money, we're going to take your son as bondmen, as bondmen, and they're going to have to be slaves until we work this debt off. So she went to Elijah. And let's see what Elijah said. Go ahead and read. And Elisha said unto her. Elisha, brother. Go ahead. What shall I do for thee? Uh-huh. Tell me, what hast thou in the house? He said, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what's, what do you have in your house? Go ahead and read. And she said, thine handmaid has not anything in the house save a pot of oil. He said, all I got is a pot of oil. You know, no great riches, no diamonds to pawn. You understand? Not even furniture to sell. I just have a pot of oil. Then what did the prophet say to her? Go ahead and read. Then he said, go, borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels. Borrow not a few. Now, 
She didn't even have a bunch of empty pots in the house. They had none, so she had to go borrow them from her neighbor. Go ahead and read. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shall pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. Now, she didn't know what she was going to do with them, but she obeyed the prophet. She went and got all of these things. He said, now I want you to start filling them up. And the one that you fool, set them on the side. Go ahead and read. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her son. Just like he said. Go ahead. Who brought the vessels to her, uh -huh. and she poured out. Go ahead. And it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. Uh -huh. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more, and the oil stayed. Now, she got this vessel, this is a little pot and filling up a pot after pot after pot after pot. But still, this original pot of oil had not run out. Now, once she finished, now she went back to the prophet. Go ahead and read. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go, sell the oil and pay thy debt. Go ahead. And live thou and thy children of the rest. So now, she did what the prophet said. She filled up a whole bunch of pots of oil. Then she was able to sell that oil to other people. Not only was she able to pay off the debt, she had enough oil for her and her children to live the rest of their life. Why? Because she believed the prophet. She had faith in the word. And how do we know that she believed the prophet? Because she went and did what he said. Otherwise, you'd have been doing this. You know how we do all this rational thinking? I got one pot. Now, when I put the oil in the other pot, now this pot is empty. <laughs> you don't have to think with the rationale of man, but you have to think with the power of God. He said, I can do it. I'm going to do it. And you'll be surprised how things that you don't expect to happen, you figure it's impossible to happen, will happen. But you have to have faith, sister and brother. You have to have faith. Now let's go and look at another case. Let's go into Numbers, chapter 21. Numbers, chapter 21. See, people don't understand what faith is. It merely means belief. See, the preachers that made it something else. I hear a lot of special Gentile tea preach out here. When faith came, I'm looking around. What are you looking for, brother? I'm looking for faith. I'm looking for him to walk in here with some suitcases and set them down and so say, I'm faith and I'm here. It is not like that. When you came to the decision to obey God, the way he want to be obeyed, that's when your faith came. That's what he's telling you. But he can't tell you nothing different because he don't know nothing different. Numbers chapter 21. Numbers 21. Because sisters and brothers, the Lord made this thing simple. And man has taken the simplicity out of it. Why? So he can rob people. Numbers chapter 21, and we're going to start reading at verse 5. Numbers chapter 21 and verse 5. Okay, go ahead. And the people spake against God and against Moses. Israel was always complaining <laughs> against God. Do you understand? <laughs> and against Moses. So I, I expect to have people, even in the Israel of God, think they're smarter than me and, and the book that I'm reading out of. That's why people say, well, your brother, you know the brother got to us, man, look here. They didn't believe Moses. They didn't believe Jesus. They didn't believe the prophet. I'm in pretty good company. And the people speak against God and Moses. Go ahead and read. Wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? Now, they're still hitting on that, ain't it? Go ahead and read. But there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loathes this light bread. Wait a minute. That's the matter that God reigned from heaven. The book called that angel's food. 
You was hungry and he rained you bread from heaven to keep you alive, but now you're going to say you hate this light bread. God didn't like that. And when God don't like something that you do, he acts on it. Go ahead and read. And the Lord sent fiery servants, uh, serpents among the people, uh -huh. and they bit the people, uh -huh. and much people of Israel died. Now, Lord didn't say nothing. He just sent them poison snakes in there and started killing them, and they start dying. All of a sudden now, they found religion. <laughs> Go ahead and read. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned. All of a sudden, they didn't found religion. We have sinned. Go ahead and read. But we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Go ahead. Praying to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. Go ahead. And Moses prayed for the people. And Moses prayed for the people. But sometimes God do something. They don't sometimes, all the time when he do something, there are conditions you have to do to meet it. People tell me, well, you know, uh, uh, God loved me with all my faults. No, he don't. Come to God as you will. No, you cannot. God have this, this uh, what do they call it? This, 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 this love, what do they call it? Unconditional. Unconditional love. <laughs> you have not read this book. Oh, heaven. So Moses went to the Lord and made a prayer for him. And what did the Lord say? Go ahead and read. Verse 8. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, uh -huh. and set it upon a pole. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. Now the Lord put it in their hand. I done delivered you, and delivered you, and delivered you, and you're still complaining. I will not deliver you from these snakes. I'm going to let you deliver yourself from the snake. That's why the hospital get that snake, the stick with the, with the snakes on them. So look, Moses did what the Lord said. Go ahead and read. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Now, sisters and brothers, the Lord put it in their hand. Let it be according to your faith. I'm not going to give you nothing big to do, something that's superhuman. You have to be able to fly or walk on the back of a chair. I'm going to do you something simple. When the snake bites you, look at the snake on the stick, <laughs> and you'll live. That's not hard, is it? No, it's not. See, the Lord wants to, want to save you. Therefore, he makes everything simple. But it's righteous. So when the snake bit, if you believe Moses and you believe the word of God, you look up on the snake. That's that simple. You didn't die. How can you ask for more than that? Same thing with the Lord. The snake gave you a mortal life. Jesus offered you something bigger. Let me go and show it. Let's go on to St. John, the third chapter. St. John, chapter 3. But, see, people want the Lord to do everything. You don't have to do nothing. I can eat what I want. I can say what I want. I can do what I want. All I have to do is mention the name of Jesus, and I got it made. It don't work that way, sisters and brothers. It don't work like that. <laughs> Brother come, well, you know, I'm going to deal with Yahshua or Yehuda. Still, you got to do what he said, whatever you call it. <laughs> 3 and verse 14. Look what Jesus told Nicodemus here. St. John, the third chapter, and we're going to start at verse 14. St. John 3 and 14. Okay, read it. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Uh-huh. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. That's simple, isn't it? That is so simple. Just like the people stopped, that didn't die because they looked up on the snake and had faith that they would live, all you got to do is obey Jesus. That's how you look up on it. 
He said, I'm going to be lifted on up. And just like it was as a serpent, anybody that have faith in me or believe in me will get eternal life. Look at that simplicity, sisters and brothers. Simplicity. You have the keys of godliness. That means being able to become God in your hand and you have a simple lock. Nothing complicated. Didn't give you no, what do they call this combination lock where you have to remember a lot of numbers? Give you a lock and a key. Simple as that. And you have stepped off into immortality on the good side of the king. By simply believing what the Lord says, sisters and brothers. And you do it the way he said. And the way he said is simple. There ain't nothing too hard on the, in this life that you should not be able to suffer to get immortality on the good side of the kingdom, to become God. Simplicity. People don't like simplicity. Let me go. Let's go into 2 Kings, the fifth chapter. We're going to show another case of what faith can do for you, but you got to do something too. See, that's the part that people don't want to do. They don't want to do something. They want God to do it all. <laughs> Unconditional love. No matter what I do. Just like Dionne Warwick made that record, don't make me over. <laughs> God's business is making you over. That's right. <laughs> I, think, I think she even said in that song, accept me with all my faults. He couldn't have been talking to God. No, not at all. Because even man ain't going to do that. That's right. Second Kings chapter 5. Second Kings chapter 5, we're going to start reading at verse 1. Second Kings chapter 5, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. Okay, go ahead. Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance into Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. Now this wasn't even an Israelite. This was a Syrian. And we're going to show you he even fought against Israel and took some Israelites captive. But he was a leper. Go ahead and read. But he, was, but he said he was an honorable man. That was the key, sisters and brothers. No matter what nationality you are, what color, or what race, if you are honorable according to God's honor, he'll listen to you. Go ahead and read. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid, and she waited on Naaman's wife. Now they went out and jumped Israel in a raid and got some captive. And one of them was a young woman. And, he, and Naaman made her, you know, made her uh, his wife serve it. And what happened? Go ahead and read. And she said unto her mistress, Would God, my Lord, were with the prophet that is in Samaria? Uh -huh. For he will recover him of his leprosy. Now, she said, and tell her, look, we got a prophet in Samaria that will recover Naaman of this leprosy. So through negotiation between king and king and all that stuff, finally Naaman uh, 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 went and the king of Israel told him, go on down there and see Elijah, Elisha. And let's see what happened when he went to see Elisha. Skip down to verse 9. Verse 9. And go ahead. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. Go ahead. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shall be clean. Look, the prophet wouldn't even come out the house to meet the man. <laughs> he just sent a, a, his son, go down there and tell him to go down the Jordan River and dip seven times, and he's going to be clean. Naaman got mad because he's, because he's the captain of the, you know, he's the top captain of the Syrian army. And what did Naaman do? Go ahead and read. But Naaman was wroth and went away and said, Behold, I thought he would surely come out to me uh -huh. and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God 
and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. Now, he was mad. He had in his mind, in his mind, how God was going to heal him. You know, you can heal me, but if you don't do it in my mind, you ain't going to do it in nothing. So he was hacked out. I looked for him to come up and do some blah, 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 and blue, blah, blue, and then put his hand on me and just rip the leper off me. That's what he was looking for. That's what people look for now. You got the Holy Ghost when you fall down and kick and slob all over the place. Or you jump up and fall over two, three chairs or two previews. Or either scream and run up and down the hall and run around. Yes, you got the Holy Ghost, all right. It don't work like that with God. No, it don't. What verse, Albert? That was the end of 11. Go ahead and read. Are not a banner and far part rivers of Damascus better than all the river waters of Israel? He ain't talking the waters, not the, the case. <laughs> That's right. It's just the old base. So now look, the water of Syria is better than the Israelites' water. Go ahead and read. May I not wash in them and be clean? Go ahead. So he turned and went away in rage. Uh-huh. And his servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, wouldst thou not have done it? How much rather then when he said to thee, Wash and be clean. Now, that's simple. He mad now. He would have been the leper the rest of his life. He didn't storm now. First thing, he didn't give me no respect. He wouldn't even come out and talk to me. He going to send a servant. Then he going to tell me to wash in the rivers of Jordan when I can go down there in the rivers of Syria, and they better than all of them. God said, look, if he had told you to jump down and do like Saul did David, bring me the four skins of 100. Yeah. Uh, of 100 of my enemy. In other words, he would have had to go and kill 100 men and circumcise them and bring it back to Saul. See, Saul did that because Saul wanted David to get killed. He wanted to be killed. Or either, so if uh, he had told Naaman that, go down and bring me the head of 15 captains. Take you 40 horses and 20 chariots and climb the mountain. He be doing it right now. But no, he told him to do something simple. Then his servant had to tell him, look, if he had told you to do something great, then you'd have been okay. What's wrong with doing something simple? So finally, neighbor, obey. Go ahead and read. Then when he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. Uh -huh. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Simple. Simplicity, sisters and brothers. God don't require for us to do no great big stuff. Only thing he requires us to do is simply obey. Then you obey the way he wants you to obey. You can't do it on you the way you want to do it. Don't name it. If you want to be clean, do it just like the prophet said. And if you want to get eternal life, do the word just like God said. You can't add to it. You can't take from it. Do what he said. He's going to keep it simple, sisters and brothers. He's going to keep it simple. Naaman was clean because he obeyed. And and remember, Naaman was a stranger. He was not an Israelite. God is the God of every man, woman, and child on this planet. And the one that obey him, that is the one that he will bless. But in order to obey, sisters and brothers, you have to, in order to get blessed, brother, you have to show the Lord that you believe in him. You have to obey him. Now, let's go to the book of James, James, the second chapter. But that's what's wrong with the world now. The word of God is too simple. Oh, that's simple. Like a man laying on the ground, people walking on it. I'm tired of people walking on me. What should I do? Get up. Get up. <laughs> That's 
simple, isn't it? That's right. Get on up. Let's get up. Simplicity. People don't like the simplicity of God. Because if you keep it simple, let's do exactly what he wants you to do. Can't nobody lie to you. They can't rob you. And preachers don't understand, sisters and brothers. The Lord set it up so the minister can live out of the ministry. He set it up. Man's supposed to get, the preacher's supposed to get 10% of the income. That's in the book. So if you did it right, he would still feed you. I just happen to be one of them preachers that don't want none of it. I give it all because I'm looking for salvation. Skip some money. I was able to work for that. But for the ones that want the money, you don't have to lie. Teach it the way it is. The Lord will still take care of you, and eventually you will be God. But no, no. People ain't going to pay me for that simplicity. Oh, they just read for themselves and cut me out. Yeah, but the Lord sent you to teach them how to read for themselves. And they, then the Lord told them to pay their tithe. And out of that tithe, you get to eat, mister. Right. That's like you obligated, they obligate. But no, no. That ain't good enough. So I say I got faith in God, but I don't have to do nothing he say. Naaman just showed you that's not the way it go, right? Right. This widow woman with the, with the oil just showed you that too, didn't it? Then the people looking up on the serpent showed you that too. That's you got right. to do what the Lord said. We're going to start at verse 17. James 2 and verse 17. James 2 and 17. Okay, read. Even so faith, if it is not works, is dead being alone. Isn't that? Now look what it said. Even so faith. If it have no works, it's dead being alone. That's if it don't have any works. Go ahead and read. Yeah, man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. That's the way it goes, don't it? That's right. How you going to show me that you got faith and you won't do nothing that God said? Like they say on the street, you just bumping your gun. You got faith? Without works, I'll show you my faith by my works. Go ahead and read. Thou believest that there is one God, uh -huh. thou do as well. Go ahead. The devils also believe and tremble. Now, you don't even believe as much as Satan believes. The devils believe. Because you don't tremble. They tremble. That means that they know he's there. You just think it's a God where some preacher say. Uh-uh. <laughs> so, you, so you believe in God? You, you, your belief is not as strong as Satan. Think Ooh, about it. That's deep. You don't have the faith that a devil has. That's right. That's deep. Otherwise, you'd be trembling. That's right. And you will do what he said. And that is deep. <laughs> if your faith is less than the one that the Lake of Fire was created for, what do you think you're going to end up? Oof. Think about what I just told you. That is deep. What verse? That was the end of 19. Go ahead. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works? Go ahead. When he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Now look, he said, wilt thou know, O vain man? Vain means nothing. You're, you're serving me for nothing. That faith without work is dead. Just like Abraham. He offered up his son Isaac upon the altar. Go ahead and read. Seest thou how faith wrought with his works? Uh-huh. And by works was faith made perfect. Because Abraham did that, his faith was made perfect. Go ahead and read. And the scripture was fulfilled which said, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Now look, preachers, read this. And say, so Abraham believed God. And it was counted for him for right. But look, how did Abraham show that he believed God? Through his works. He was going to sacrifice Isaac. See, the priests had cut out the behavior. They didn't cut out the efforts that Abraham made. And just say he believed God. No, when he took Isaac, 
Then that made Abraham's faith perfect. Go ahead and read. You see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. You just can't get up and say, I believe in God and don't do nothing, sister and brother. You got to do something so you can reap the proceeds. You have to do something because if you don't do nothing, don't believe in God, then you don't have nothing coming. Let's go to Hebrews 11 chapter. You got to believe in God. I'm showing you everything that happened, it all centered around belief because belief is faith. They didn't all of a sudden, now, faith is bigger than belief now. They didn't made faith so big that don't nobody understand it. I got faith. I, I, that means you believe, huh? Yeah, I believe God. Then why is it that you washing your car and doing all your washing on the Sabbath day? Going to the movie on the Sabbath day. Get drunk as you can on Friday night, which is the evening of the Sabbath day. And you're going to tell me you believe God? Your behavior have told me that you are lying. I didn't judge you. You passed judgment on yourself by your behavior. This is so simple. I don't have to walk up and say, that's a dog. He walking through here. <laughs> Everybody looking at him know he's a dog. Right. I don't have to condemn him. We're going to read one verse. Hebrews 11 and verse 30. 11 and verse 30. Okay, read. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. Now, the Lord told uh, uh, Joshua to look out and deliver Jericho into your hand. But what I want you to do is, I want you to compass it seven times. Seven, compass one day uh, for seven days. And on the seventh day, I want you to compass it seven times. Because if we look, God, you're going to give us Jericho. Why are you going to put us through all this trouble? Just knock the wall down, and we go in and take. He said, no, I'm going to give it to you, but I'm going to give it to you where I want you to have. You're going to put some labor into this. So they did it, and they gave a shout. The trumpet was blue, and the walls fell flat. But the Lord even did something bigger with Joshua. He stopped the moon and the sun. And the sun. Let's go look at it. Let's go into Joshua, the 10th chapter. If you think the walls were something, this is really something here. Joshua chapter 10. Joshua chapter 10. And it is all predicated on faith, sisters and brothers. This is what people don't understand. It is all about faith because your faith is going to dictate your behavior. And when you behave like a person that have faith, then you're going to reap the proceeds of your faith. And the Lord have it simple. Just do what I say. And this is what people don't want to do. They don't want to do something simple. They think it's something. That's why you go to church, you hear, you see everything but the Word of God. So we have singing, but we don't have a bunch of screaming. Yeah! <laughs> we're going to have them running up and down now bloom 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 I remember Zah said they went to the church one time and said the preacher ran on the back of chair I still take me some I take me some effort to believe that but Zah said he went up there and he was examining them chairs <laughs> when all I had to do was teach the word of God you ain't got to go through all that drama Lay your hand on somebody's forehead. They fall out and they kick. You don't even have to heal nobody nowadays. What did Jesus told Thomas when Thomas doubted that he had rose from the dead when he come in? And he said, come here, Thomas. Put your finger in my hand. Thrust your hand in my side. My side. He said, Thomas said, my God, my Lord and my God. He had never called Jesus God. Then Jesus said, bless he said, you see, Thomas, and you believe. Blessed are those that don't see and believe. Look at all that Israel saw, and they didn't believe. That's right. 
But what about you have seen nothing? But you believe. It's there. You're blessed. You might not see it, but you ain't paying no attention. I don't have to have a house to live in an apartment. I don't have to have clothes. I can, I can be hungry. Think about what you got. You don't have to have it, but you got it. Well, see, I worked to get it. Who gave you the job? And the strength to do it. Sometimes think about them basic things, and all of a sudden you realize that I have been blessed. That's right, brother boy. Joshua 10 and 1. Joshua 10 and 1. Go ahead. Now it came to pass when Adonazedek, king of Jerusalem, had heard how Joshua had taken Ai uh -huh. and had utterly destroyed it. Go ahead. As he had done to Jericho and her king. Uh -huh. So he had done to Ai and her king. And how the inhabitants of Gibeon had made peace with Israel and were among them. Now, uh -huh. this guy has seen what Joshua did to Ai, the little place, and seen what Joshua did to uh, uh, Jericho. And now the strongest king in the region, which was the Gibeonite, they went and deceived Joshua and him when Joshua and him was supposed to kill them, okay? But then they deceived Joshua and them into making a covenant and swearing by God, so Joshua and him had to take care of them. That's See, right. people don't understand that. When you give your word, you best deal with it. That's right. Go ahead and read. That they feared greatly because Gibeon was a great city uh -huh. as one of the royal cities. Go ahead. And because it was greater than Ai, and all the men thereof were mighty. Go Therefore, ahead. What verse was that? That was the end of two. Go ahead. Wherefore, Adonazedek, king of Jerusalem, sent it to Hoham, king of Hebron, unto Piram, king of Jarmuth, and unto Jeff Jaffia, king of Lachish. So they, tell, they gave it a name. See, people think that them name that w w w w just come with Israel. It was already there. That's right. Go ahead and read. And unto Debir, king of Eglon, saying, Come up unto me and help me, that we may smite Gibeon, for it has made peace with Joshua and with the children of Israel. Now, when the Gibeonites heard that, they called Joshua. So look, we, you, we agreed that we're going to be your servant. We're going to cut your wood and we're going to draw your water. So now your servants is in trouble. All of the kings of the region going to come down against us. But because Joshua and them had made a league with these people and had given a word, then God even honored it. Skip down to verse 8. Verse 8 and read it. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear them not, for I have delivered them into thine hand. There shall not a man, there shall not a man of them stand before thee. Now, the Lord, look, if he was thinking like man, then the Lord would have said, you know, I, you know, I told you not to make a league with them people. But you did. But now they're gonna come down and kill them. Y'all don't have to do nothing. Just stand still and let them be. No, you can't do that. No. When you make an agreement, even with your enemy, you have to protect your enemy because you gave your word. So God told Joshua, go and deal with them. I done delivered them in your hand. Go ahead and read. Joshua therefore came unto them suddenly and went up from Gilgal all that night. Go ahead. And the Lord discomfited them before Israel. Go ahead. And slew them with a great slaughter at Gibeon. Uh-huh. And chased them along the way that goeth up to Bethoron and smote them, smote them to Azekah and to Makeda. And it came to pass as they fled from before Israel and were in the going down to Bethoron that the Lord cast down great stones from heaven upon them unto Azekah, and they died. There were more which died with hailstones than they whom the children of Israel slew with the sword. That tell me that you got rocks in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't he say it rained down storms? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. <laughs> you better be careful. You don't want to, you talk about rain, a little hail hits you. A big rock can come down there. <laughs> but anyway, go ahead. Verse 12, then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. Go ahead. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon. Boy, he made, Joshua said that. 
with authority, didn't he? Why? Because he believed God. Go ahead and read. And the sun stood still, uh -huh. and the moon stayed Go ahead. until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Go ahead. Is not this written in the book of Jasher? So, go ahead. So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hasted not to go down about a whole day. And there was no day like that before it or after it that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man, for the Lord fought for Israel. See, if you obey God, he will listen to you. I had some, I'm watching uh, on TV a while back and some preachers were discussing this and they had some scientists. They tell me, well, you know, if the Lord stopped the earth and all that, see, the people will fly off of it because of the gravity. He's going through all kinds of things. And I'm thinking one thing. He is trying to reason from the standpoint of the created. Therefore, he can't understand the reasoning of the creator. Makes a difference. You can't reason with man's reason, you have to reason with God's reason. Joshua, because he had faith, God even stopped the sun and moon. You know he had faith. He done yes, knocked sir. down the walls of Jericho. That's right. He done knocked off AI. And he said, these people are in your hand. Then you turn around and he raining stones from heaven and killed them. Look, Lord, the day about to run out. I need some more late to daytime. That's right. Sun, stop. Moon, don't make a move. That's faith, sister. That's faith. And the Lord listened to him. He listened to him. So if he can listen to Joshua, Elijah, Moses, and all of the servants, and you are a servant, why can't he listen to you? It's all that simple. But you have to have faith. Otherwise, he ain't going to do nothing you say. But if you have faith, I know you don't want to believe it, but there ain't nothing prohibited from you. From you. Let's go into Matthew, the 14th chapter. Matthew, chapter 14. Because I believe everything I teach, sisters and brothers, I believe it with all my heart. That's why I can walk up here and I can teach it with all my might. Because I believe it. If I didn't believe it, I couldn't stand up here and teach it. I cannot stand up and deliberately lie to you. I've made some mistakes, but when I find out about them, I corrected them, sister and brother. That's why you hear me say a lot of time, I don't have no dog in this fight. This is the Lord's thing. All I am is a, a mouthpiece that's passing it on to you. And once you get it down, you really don't need me no more. The only one you're going to need forever is the Lord. Matthew's 14. And we're going to start at verse 22. This is when Jesus was talking to the people, and then he told his apostles, go on about your business. I'll catch up with y'all later. Verse 22, go ahead. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship. Go ahead. And to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. So he told them, so he didn't just want to unceremonially go home. He sent the multitude away and still talking to him, but he told his apostles, I want y'all to get on the ship and go on to the other side or the river, or whatever the body of water was. Let's skip now to verse 25, because after he had got, got through doing what he's doing, what did he, what did he do next? Go ahead and read. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. Uh-huh. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. So now when they saw Jesus walking on the sea, <laughs> wait a minute, this got to be an angel or something like this. And they start crying out. Go ahead and read what happened. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Go ahead. Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. He says, me. Don't be afraid. Go ahead and read. Now, Peter always got the big mouth. So what did Peter say? And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. In other words, prove that you, that you, that you are who you say you are. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Boy, that guy had a lot of nerve. But still, if, you, if, 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 if it's you, tell me to meet you. And what happened? Go ahead and read. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Wait a minute. You mean Peter actually walked on the water? 
That's right. That's what he said, didn't he? So Jesus ain't the only one that walked on water. No, Peter wasn't. walked on it too. But what happened? Go ahead. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. Uh, ain't that something? What did the Lord say? Go ahead and read. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? O thou of little faith, why did you doubt me? I said you can walk on water. Then you was walking on water. But all of a sudden you look down and you reason with the mind of man. Hey, people can't walk on water. <laughs> and the day you reason, that's the moment you reason, that's when you start to say. In short, you lost the faith. You lost the faith. Therefore, the Lord couldn't work for you no more. Had a hell faith, move mountains. This is what people don't understand. You got to have the faith. Now, this is something I had in the last week's lesson. Like I said, this is a lesson that, that fell through the cracks, so I won't go through the history part because you already had that. But I'm going to go, because we brought it to you out of the book of Isaiah. But now I'm going to bring it to you out of the book of Kings. Let's go to 2 Kings, the 18th chapter. 2 Kings, chapter 18. A sisters and brothers, people don't understand the importance of faith. You just got to believe. I just believe it's going to happen. When I leave my house going somewhere, I believe I'm going to get there. That's right. When the people leave me and I send the brothers out of town, they get a plane, they're on a plane. I said, now go out to Ohio, either Midway, and catch the plane, and maybe you will get to Houston. <laughs> Wait a minute, Brother Boo. What you mean, maybe? Well, you know, the plane can fall. To no, no. You're serving of God. Listen, brother, I'm going to tell you something. We have been doing this for 30 something years, going out of town, fly, flying and driving. Don't you know we have had, we had two accidents in the vans, and the people come up, thought that the guys in the van, somebody got to be dead. You know, the Hebrew come up, got the dust off, and went on and took care of business. We had to tow the van. 30-something years, nobody died in a plane crash, and nobody have not even gotten injured in an right. auto. Who do you think was taking care of us? Lord. Because we are doing God's work because we have faith in him, and we're going to do what we have to do to take care of his business. Out of all these times, all the travels we've made, Nobody have been injured. Right. Because we believe that God is going to get us to where we're going because he wants us to go there to take care of his business, and then he's going to bring us back safely. We believe that. Therefore, we act on our belief. Through our efforts, the Lord see that we have faith in him. 2 Kings 18, chapter 18, and we're going to start reading at verse 13. 2 Kings 18 and 13. Like I said, this was in the last week, but it's just from another book. But then, that's what the Lord said, out of the mouth of two or more witnesses is a fact established. 18, and we're going to start reading at verse 13. Okay, go ahead. Now, in the 14th year of King Hezekiah, did Sennacherib, king of, of Assyria, come up against all the fenced cities of Judah? Go ahead. And took them. Uh -huh. And Hezekiah, king of Judah, sent to the king of Assyria to Lachish, saying, I have offended. Return from me, that that which thou puttest on me will I bear. Go ahead. And the king of Assyria appointed unto Hezekiah, king of Judah, 300 talents of silver, and 30 talents of gold. See, we didn't read this last week. Hezekiah actually was serving the king of Assyria, paying tribute to him. Apparently, it must not have been enough, so he said, I have offended. What else do you want me? Then he put another increase the money that they had to pay. But then, that wasn't enough. I guess he got beside himself. Skip down to verse 17. 
Verse 17, and go ahead. And the king of Assyria sent Tartan and Rapsaris and Rapshakeh from Lachish to King Hezekiah with a great host against Jerusalem. Now, why did he do that? The man said, I done sinned and said, what can I do to show you that I've sinned? He said, send me this amount of money. And he gave him the money. Then they turn around and going to send a great army down there. Go ahead and read. And they went up and came to Jerusalem. Uh -huh. And when they were come up, they came and stood by the conduit of the upper pool. Go ahead. Which is in the highway of the fullest field. And when they had called to the king, there came out to them Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, uh -huh. which was over the household, and Shepna the scribe. Go ahead. And Joah, the son of Asaph, the recorder. Go ahead. And Rapshakeh said unto them, Speak ye now to Hezekiah. Thus saith the great king, the king of Assyria, What confidence is this wherein thou trustest? Now look, all of a sudden now he going to, Go against God. He even told the men on the wall, you're going to eat your own dumb if you don't come out. He got real vulgar, but skip down to verse 28 and go ahead. Then Rapshakeh said, Rapshakeh stood and cried with a loud voice in the Jews' language and, excuse me, and spake, saying, Hear the word of the great king, the king of Assyria. Thus saith the king, Let not Hezekiah deceive you, for he shall not be able to deliver you out of his hand. Go ahead. Neither, neither let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord, saying, The Lord will surely deliver us, and this city shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. That's when he crossed the line. He said, Don't let him make you trust in the Lord. Skip down to verse 33 and go ahead. If you can read a little faster, go ahead. <laughs> Has any of the gods of the nations delivered at all his land out of the hand of the king of Assyria? Go ahead. Where are the gods of Hamath and Arphad? Where are the gods of Shephardim, Hena, and Iva? Have they delivered Samaria out of mine hand? Now he delivered, talk about all of them gods. that He knocked them off. He said, hey, God didn't deliver. And he even said, didn't... Uh, you know, he didn't even deliver Samaria. That was a northern tribe because the Assyrians took out the ten tribes, the nine tribes. God didn't, did he deliver them out of your hand? Those are your brothers, Judah. Go ahead and read. Who are they among all the gods of the countries that have delivered their country out of mine hand that the Lord should deliver Jerusalem out of mine hand? So what makes your God different from anybody else's God? Don't you know people have asked us that? But then... Their God can do what our God did. Let's go into 19th chapter, 2 Kings 19th chapter, and verse 1. Go ahead and read. And it came to pass when King Hezekiah heard it, that he rent his clothes and covered himself with sackcloth and went into the house of the Lord. Go ahead. And he sent Eliakim, which was over the household, and Shepna the scribe, and the elders of the priests covered with sackcloth to Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos. Now, nah. He went into the, the temple of the law, but he sent the servants to the prophets. Skip down to verse 6 and go ahead. And Isaiah said unto them, Thus shall ye say to your master, Thus saith the Lord, Be not afraid of the words which thou hast heard, with which the servants of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. Uh -huh. Behold, I will send a blast upon him, and he shall hear a rumor, and shall return to his own land and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. So not, not, not only did he tell him don't bleed, he ain't going to come in this city, but I'm going to send some on him, and he gonna, once I get through with him, he's going to go to his own land, and he's going to die there. Keep reading. What verse? That was the end of 7. Go ahead. That, so, was, that was the end of 7? Yeah. Skip down to verse 32 then, and go ahead. Therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the king of Assyria. Uh -huh. He shall not come into this city, nor shoot an arrow there. Go ahead. Nor come before it with shield, nor cast a bank against it. Go ahead. By the way that he came, by the same shall he return, and shall not come into this city, saith the Lord. No, he ain't going to come into this city. Go ahead and read. For I will defend this city to save it 
for mine own sake and for my servant David's sake. And it, and it came to pass that night that the angel of the Lord went out and smote in the camp of the Syrians a hundred, fourscore, and five thousand. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. Now, that's been the Israel rule, not the corpses, okay? He sent an angel in one night and killed 185,000 Assyrians. And when the Israel rose up, all they saw was a bunch of bodies scattered all over the place. Then what happened? Go ahead and read. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed and went and returned and dwelt at Nineveh. Now, we read the history and showed you that last week, didn't we? But go ahead and read. And it came to pass as he was worshiping in the house of Nisroch, his god, that Adramelech and Sherezer, his sons, smote him with the sword. And they escaped into the land of Armenia, and Arsahad and his son reigned in his stead. Then the Lord told him that, I'm going to kill your army, and then I'm going to kill you in your own land. And he sent his own sons and killed him, sisters and brothers. His own sons killed him. Now, God told Hezekiah he was going to die. And let's see what happened. Let's go into the 20th chapter of uh, 2 Kings and start at verse 1. 20 and 1. Go ahead and read. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Boy, that's a bad news. Yes, ain't it? it is. If he's going to take me, please don't tell me. But then maybe we do. I might be able to talk him out of it. Go ahead and read. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, Go ahead. I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart. That means you have to be a righteous man to make that statement, don't you? Because you're talking to the Lord now. You ain't talking to me, and I ain't talking to you. You're talking to the Lord. Go ahead and read. And have done that which is good in thy sight. Uh huh. And Hezekiah wept sore. Go ahead. And it came to pass before Isaiah was gone out into the middle court that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, thus saith the Lord, Go ahead. the God of David thy father. Uh huh. I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Go ahead. Behold, I will heal thee. So he on told the, him, I'm going to heal you. Go ahead and read. On the third day thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. Go ahead. And I will add unto thy days 15 years. Well, that's really something, ain't it? Only a servant can get that kind of service. Because he told him, Lord, you know you know my heart. I walked perfect before you. I've done all that you told me to do. And you're going to take me? I think I got a little more time left. So the Lord said, okay, I'm going to heal you. But even that had to be done a certain way. Go ahead and read. And I will deliver thee in this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. Go ahead. And I will defend this city for mine own sake. Go ahead. And for my servant David's sake. And Isaiah said, take a lump of figs. And they took and laid it on the boil and he recovered. Now, he was, it was killing with a boil. But why do you need, you know, like people say, you don't need medicine. Why did he had to put a clump of figs on the ball. Yeah. Oh, sometimes the Lord said, I'm going to heal you, but I'm going to put it in your hand. It's just like going to doctors. Got people where you shouldn't go to doctors, you're herbalist. I ain't got nothing against herbalists. Good. But sometimes you have to go and let the physician deal with your situation. Why did God need a clump of figs to heal Hezekiah? Don't. He didn't need it. Mm -mm. But he told his prophets to tell Hezekiah's servants what to do. What if Hezekiah said, look, you don't put them figs on me. God said he's going to give me 15 years. I don't need them. But then he would die. Something that simple. See, I'm pointing that out, sisters and brothers, to let you know that God is a conditional God. He's not an in spite of yourself God. He gave him his time, but he gave it to him under his condition, sisters and brothers, because his servant did what, he, what God said, and because he allowed his servant to do what God said, he got to live an extra 15 years. 
Let us go into Matthew, the 21st chapter. See, people don't like to look at the little fine print in the Word of God, which is still simple. And what it is? Obey me. Right. That's what they don't want to deal with. I'm going to serve the Lord, but I'm going to serve him for me. That's why, sisters and brothers, in case y'all have never noticed, a none of the Israeli God have outside Pastor Henry Bowie. None of them. And none of the local congregation, you won't find the name out there, Pastor X, Y, and Z. You know why? Because the church is the Lord's church. He is the pastor of the Israeli God. We don't count. Only thing you count for is saving yourself. And in order to do that, you have to be able to listen to the Lord. That's why he said, hear, O Israel. Hear. If you don't hear, you're not going to obey. We're going to start at Matthew 21 and verse 18. Matthew 21 and verse 18. Okay, go ahead. Now in the morning as he returned into the city, he hungered. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon but leaves only and said unto it, let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever. Uh huh. And presently the fig tree withered away. That's really something, ain't it? Go ahead. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How soon is the fig tree withered away? Go ahead. Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. Now, he was telling them that. Well, you might, mm, I think I'm going to go find me a mountain. I'm going to tell you something. I ain't going to call his name, but we had a brother in the, old, in the, in the early days. He's at Lake Michigan and baptizing people, and he told him, stand back, stand back. <laughs> and he's going to go out there and walk on the water. Bloop, he stopped. <laughs> so don't try to prove God. You go to God when you need him. But look what he said. Go, go ahead and finish that. Verse 22. In all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, uh -huh. believing ye shall receive. He said that, and I can't kick against it. You understand? Right. But then James gives you some good advice. Let's go to the book of James. James, the fourth chapter. But I believe we have done some crazy stuff in our younger days, sister and brother. <laughs> this brother actually thought he could walk on the water. He was all excited about it. Stand back. I had a situation where a guy, <coughs> they were going to baptize him in Lake Mission, and he changed his mind, and he tried to run. The brother tackled him, <laughs> the same one that was going to walk on water. <laughs> Drug him to the water. It's been rough sometimes, but sometimes serving God has been some big fun, sister and brother. <laughs> I hear you. I'm going to tell you something. We, we, we've had our good time. Yes, we have. James chapter 4, James chapter 4, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. James 4 and 1. Okay, go ahead. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lust that war in your members? Now, that's what it is. It all starts with your lust, what you want. And otherwise, why are you going to think to go over and take somebody else's stuff? Go ahead and read. Ye lust and have not. Uh, he said, you lust and you have not. Go ahead. Ye kill and desire to have Go ahead. and cannot obtain. Go ahead. Ye fight in war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Then that's the reason you didn't ask. Why are you going to take somebody else's stuff? Ask the Lord and he'll deliver. Go ahead and read. Ye ask and receive not. Why? Because ye ask amiss. Because you ask amiss. I'm going to see if God going to do this here. Go ahead and read. That ye may consume it upon your lust. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not? that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Look, sisters and brothers, sometimes you ask, you ask out of your love. Sometimes you want something because of envy. And the Lord don't hear you. Sometimes you ask for the wrong reason, sisters and brothers. 
And a lot of you are asking, you don't fully obey God. You can't say like Hezekiah said, look, Lord, I walk, before, I walk perfect before you. That's a big statement, eh? So when you ask and you don't get it, those, well, I don't believe it. I'm through with it. See, the Lord was merciful on me when I got mad when I saw that church. You mean you got the nerve to get mad at me? Heart attack. Over with. But I guess he saw where he wanted to bring me. So when you ask and you don't get it, that don't mean that Jesus lied. Because one thing is, if you're going to start asking for stuff, you have to have your house in order. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's go into John, the ninth chapter. Back, back right up to John chapter 9. Sometimes I'll be wanting to ask the Lord something, but then I say in my mind, I, I, it might not happen. Right away, it's over with. It ain't going to happen. Well, I see it in my mind. John 9, and this is a regular guy, had to straighten out the top religious people, the Pharisees. So they're going to say Jesus uh, 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 was a sinner. This guy tells him, no, this can't be. John 9, and we're going to start read one verse, verse 31. 9 and verse 31, and this would be good for you to pay attention to this, sisters and brothers. Read it. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. Uh -huh. But if any man be a worshiper of God do and doeth his will, him he heareth. That's it, sisters and brothers. God don't hear sinners. But if you are a servant of God and you do his will, he will hear you. But you got to walk in his ways. He will hear you and you have to believe that. Because if you don't, if you're a sinner, your pride don't mean nothing. Let's go into Proverbs, the 28th chapter. Proverbs chapter 28. That's why, that's why I look at football games. And I see this team down here, he get on his knees, and then he do the cross. And then you got the other team, he get on his knees, and he do the cross. I'm thinking, now, why should God listen to either one of y'all? Let me beat my opponent. <laughs> and both of you praying to the same God. So why should, if he's the God of both one, then why should he get involved in a football game? You're going to pick up your paycheck and go home. Proverbs 28 and verse 4. 28 and 4. Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 4. Okay, read it. They that forsake the law praise the wicked. Now they that forsake the the law. Praise the wicked. Go ahead. But such as keep the law, contend with them. But if you if keep the law, you contend with them. You know, oh, don't let them get away with it. Say the commandments ain't no more. The law ain't no more. Think about it now. They that forsake the law praise the wicked. All day tomorrow, people are going to be preaching that you don't have to keep the law. You don't have to do nothing. Christ did it all. So if they are saying that, then they have forsaken the law. Isn't that correct? And if they have forsaken the law, then who are they praising? The wicked. Skip down to verse 9. Verse 9 and go ahead. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. Oh, <laughs> You're going to hear the law, but you're going to get on your knees and pray to the Lord. That's an abomination to God. It's just like going to a dinner somewhere. People are non-believing. You got pork chops and chitlins on the table. And they say, Brother Bowie, will you bless the food? I admit the last time I did that, 
I look around, I didn't see no pork, pork or nothing. Then I did a quick blessing. I don't know, I might have did a Jesus wept. I don't know what it was. <laughs> but I got to tell the truth, I did. But if you're going to sit down and you got, got the uh, uh, pig bacon and pig sausage in front of me, I'm sitting there looking at it, uh-uh, I ain't blessing that. Lord ain't going to hear that. Go ahead and read. Verse 10. Whoso causeth the righteous to go astray in an evil way, he shall fall himself into his own pit. So now, you ain't supposed, you ain't supposed to break, uh, forsake the law, and you supposed to, like the Lord said, when people break the law, you're supposed to contend with them because you're trying to stop them from walking down an evil path. But the whole thing is you cannot obey God if you don't believe him. And if you don't believe him, you're going to sin against him. And you know, sisters and brothers, they're willful sinners. If you see somebody that's willfully sinning, then ain't no prayer going to help them. None whatsoever. If you do, you pray that the Lord turn them from their evil way because you got people that coming in and faking and messing with God, and they know that they ain't right. Sometime that fell and the Lord will turn on you. I'm going to give you a good example. Let's go into Acts the 19 chapter. Acts chapter 19. Got a lot of people faking. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get down there, you know, we're going to hold hands and we're going to pray. He don't believe, he don't believe in the God you believe in. And sometime, not all the time, sometime the Lord will turn on you. Acts chapter 19, and we're going to start at verse 11. Acts chapter 19, and we're going to start reading at verse 11. We'll give you a good example. Okay, go ahead. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs. Now you see them false prophets telling we're going to send you a blessed handkerchief? Now you know where they got it from, don't you? Go ahead and read. Or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Go ahead. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, ecstasists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, uh -huh. We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. <laughs> now we're going to command you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. You know, you don't even know Jesus yourself. It's you're right. talking about, but you just saw the stuff that Paul was doing. Now you're going to come in and cash in on it. And what happened? Go ahead and read. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, uh -huh. and chief of the priest, which did so. Now these were children, these were sons of the priest, the chief priest. Go ahead and read. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Uh-huh. And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. Now, sometimes the Lord will do that to you. You fake it and you know you fake it. You know you don't know God, but you're going to approach him like somebody that does. And sometimes he'll turn on you and let stuff happen. So these guys come in and we go, we, 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 we command you by uh, uh, Jesus, which Paul speak of, to come out. Yeah, listen, we don't know, we, we know Paul, we know Jesus, but we don't know you. And they jumped on and beat him down and stripped him naked, and they was wounded, and they ran out of the house naked and wounded. But it had to be some embarrassment. I'm telling you. <laughs> Just think about it. Now let's go at another, let's go into 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter, and we got three, two, three more places after this. 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter, to let you know when you are serving of God, God will stand with you. All you got to do is believe, sisters and brothers. And people don't want to go with that. But you have to believe God will stand with you. 2 Chronicles, chapter 20, and we're going to start at verse 1, 20 and 1. 2 Chronicles, chapter 20, and verse 1. 
Okay, go ahead. And it came to, and it came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other besides the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Go ahead. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side, uh -huh. Syria. Go ahead. And behold, they be in Hazazon, a Hazazon, oh my God, Hazazon to Mar, which is in Igadi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. Go ahead. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help for the Lord, even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Now, when these guys, you got Ammon, Moab, and Edom coming against Israel, come against Judah, them big armies, they knew they couldn't win. So Hezekiah turned to the Lord. Go ahead, and says Jehoshaphat turned to the Lord. Go ahead and read. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court. Go ahead. And said, O Lord God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven, and rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? Go ahead. And in thine hand is there not power and might, uh -huh. so that none is able to withstand thee? Now he knew, let the Lord know, I know your power, but go ahead. That was the end of six. Let's skip now to verse uh, uh, 13 and go ahead. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives and their children, then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. Go ahead. And he said, Hearken ye all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat. Thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed, by reason of this great multitude. Uh -huh. For the battle was not yours, but God's. This is another situation where he said, look, don't be afraid of that great big old army. The battle is not yours. This is my battle. That's why he had the, the brother tell him. Go ahead and read. Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord. He said, I want you to go down against them. But you ain't going to have to fight in this battle. Just set yourself and stand on the side, because I want you to see the salvation of the Lord. Go ahead and read. With you, O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Now, and they obeyed God. Skip down to verse 20 and go ahead. And there rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God. Have faith in the Lord your God. Go ahead and read. So shall, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets. So shall ye prosper. And have faith in the words that he sent by the prophets and you will prosper. Go ahead and read. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, uh -huh. and, that, and that should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endure forever. So instead of them going out with crossbows and, and swords and spears, they went out with singing instruments, and they sang praise unto the Lord because the Lord told them, this ain't your fight. Go ahead and read. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, uh -huh. which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. So he turned Moab and Ammon against Mount Seir, two brothers against the Edomite, and they knocked them off. Go ahead. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. Go ahead. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, every one helped to destroy another. Now, when they got through and Ammon and Moab knocked off Edom, then they turned on one another. Go ahead and read. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked into the multitude, uh -huh. and behold, they were dead bodies falling to the earth and none escaped. The Lord killed every one of them. All Judah did was 
thing. The Lord told him to go down there, stand on the side. Don't try to get inv involved in this battle. It is my battle. They believed God, and they believed the prophets. Therefore, the Lord delivered. Now, let's go into Hebrews 11 chapter again. Hebrews chapter 11. The whole thing about it, sisters and brothers, is you have to believe. You have to have faith in God. And when you believe in God, I mean, you have real faith. Can't nothing to knock you off the dime. I don't care how they come at you. You're going to stand still because you know what you have coming. You have to believe. Hebrews 11, we're going to read one verse. And after this, we got two more places. 11 and verse 6. 11 and 6. Read it. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So if you ain't got no faith, you can't believe him. You can't please him because first you got to believe that he is. Then once you believe that God is, then you have to believe that he is a rewarder of those that fear him and obey him. Therefore, you're not going to obey him. Because when you don't have faith, you even limit God. Let me give you a good example. Let's go into Matthew, the 13th chapter. Matthew, chapter 13. Matthew, chapter 13. Because if you don't believe, you even ties God's hand, sisters and brothers. Matthew 13, we're going to start reading at verse 53. 13, chapter of Matthew, and verse 53. Matthew 13, and verse 53. Okay, read it. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed thence. And when he was come into his own country, he taught them in their synagogues, insomuch that they were astonished and said, What has this man his wisdom and these mighty works? Now, this is his hometown now. I mean, what, where did this guy get all this wisdom from? And what, this mighty works. Go ahead and read. Is not this the carpenter's son? Uh huh. Is not his mother called Mary? Go ahead. And his brethren James and Joseph? Uh huh. And Simon and Judas? And look, his, look don't, we, hey, don't we know his whole family? Yeah. Go ahead and read. And his sisters, are they not all with us? Which then has this man all these things? So where did he get all this wisdom from? Go ahead. And they were offended in him. And they was offended. You come in, you got all this knowledge and wisdom and all and telling them about God because you knew him when he grew up and you know his family, you upset, you offended. Instead of saying, praise God, you done sent me a homeboy with this knowledge. So what happened? Go ahead and read. But Jesus said unto them, a prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and his own house. Because they know him. They ain't got no honor. And what happened? Go ahead and read. And he did not many mighty works there, because of their unbelief. So he couldn't do many works for them because they didn't believe in it. If you don't have no faith in the Lord, he will not work for you. He cannot work for you by his own word. So in Jesus' own country, he didn't do many miracles because the people didn't believe. Now let's go back up to Matthew, the ninth chapter, and this is the last place. Matthew, Matthew chapter 9. And we're going to start reading at verse 27. 9 and 27. Go ahead and read. And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying, saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. Uh -huh. And when he was coming to the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said unto them, Go ahead. Believe ye that I am able to do this? Is, do you believe that I'm able to do this? What did they say? Go ahead and read. They said unto him, yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. We, you know, they believe that, you know, we believe that you can fix our blindness. Go ahead and read. Then touched he their eyes, saying, according to your faith, be it unto you. Pay it, attention to what he said. According to your faith, be it unto you. In their eyes. But people tell me, Brother Bowie, uh, will you pray for me? You know, that you are your best advocate. You understand? You don't need my prayer. You need your prayer, and you have to believe that the Lord's going to hear you. If Jesus said, according to your faith, he didn't say, well, you know, I'm the Christ, so I can do it. Uh-uh, according to your faith, be it unto you. 
Go ahead and read. And their eyes were opened, and Jesus straightly charged them, saying, See that no man know it. Now, they believed. Therefore, their sight came to them. Just like all we've been showing you, you believe. And then the Lord tells you what to do, and you do what he say. He will work for you, sisters and brothers. That's simple, isn't it? Thank you for your time. Say